So it's been a while since I've done a video about investing and seeing as the market has changed quite a bit, I thought it would be interesting to talk about how I plan to invest the rest of this year and next. So if you remember in 2021, we were really in a bull market. Everyone was into trading on apps. I myself thought it was really fun to buy individual stocks and trade them. And you could buy just about any stock and it was gonna go up. But things have definitely changed. The housing market has softened. The overall stock market has dropped about 8% in the last six months. And there's just a lot more talk and fear about a coming recession. Some of the best times to invest are when no one's really thinking about it. And now that we're in more of a recession, it's not as much everywhere all over YouTube as it used to be. So these are the things I have my eye on in terms of investing. But before we get into it, I wanted to thank SoFi for sponsoring this video. At this point, we've all heard we should be investing, but where should you start? I know in the past, I've struggled to find the right investment app for everything that I want to do. And this is where SoFi comes in. SoFi is an all-in-one investing app that is built to stick with you through the long haul. They have tons of features for both new and seasoned investors. You can invest in stocks, ETFs, retirement accounts, and you can even do automated investing, which is my favorite. We'll talk about that later in the video. They also just launched iPhone. IPO investing, which in the past has been reserved only for institutional investors, but now SoFi members can participate with no account minimum. There are no commissions on stock and ETF trades, and they offer fractional shares, so you can buy your favorite company for as little as $5. If you're not quite sure where to start and you want to talk with a specialist, you'll have access to SoFi financial planners, and you can have complimentary sessions with them when you sign up. And here's the kicker, you can get up to $1,000 when you open and fund at least $10 into an active investment account. Just click my link in the description to open an account. And if you're already investing someplace else, you can get up to $5,000 to move it over to SoFi. Just click the link in my description to get started. Thank you to SoFi for sponsoring. Now let's get into how I plan to invest for the rest of this year and next year. So let's start with the most unconventional investment I'm looking at for 2022. And this is actually a lifestyle asset that produces income. More specifically, I'm looking into buying a converted van, an Airstream, or even a boat. So hear me out on this one, you guys, a converted van. So I've seen these converted vans that you can buy anywhere from 50 to $150,000 and they rent really well. And it seems like the demand is pretty good. And I've done more research on it. Stay tuned for a video all about it. They're able to charge a pretty high nightly rate. Many of these are getting between $150 to $300 per night. So the return of these can be really good considering the startup costs is so much lower than buying real estate. And if you have the startup costs for it, there are people that have fleets of these out there that are making a significant amount per month. And then it's also really cool that you can use it yourself. Like you can't take your stock market portfolio on a trip to the mountains with you. Another pro of these is since you are setting up a legit business, you should be able to write off a portion of it, at least some portion of it on your taxes, but contact your CPA for that. But lifestyle assets like this, while they can get a higher return in the short term, there are some cons that I'm considering along with it you should also know about. As far as cons go, the first one would definitely be that it's not a very liquid asset. If you want that money to put into something else, it takes time to sell something like this versus selling a stock you can do in just a couple of clicks. Another con is that it is more risky in general. You never know if someone's actually going to book. And then there's also the liability with it. If someone were to crash the van, there are ways to insure yourself and really be safe about it. But in general, any lifestyle asset is gonna be just a bit more risky than other types of investments. But really the big thing is that any lifestyle investment is gonna be more time consuming. You typically have to take some time to get them set up, clean them between bookings, and message your customers. And while you can hire out or automate just about everything of this process, it's still something that's gonna be on your mind. You're gonna have to answer to someone at some point. That all being said, I still think this one would be a really interesting one to try out. For myself, I'm looking into it. And also anyone watching, if real estate feels a little bit out of reach, this could be an interesting one but of course there are risks with any investment but I really think it could be cool because it seems like they get rented out quite a bit and Airbnb is feeling a little saturated real estate in general is pretty high so this could be 
a good alternative if you're looking into something like that. The next category I'm investing in is real estate, but not in the way that you think. You see, the housing market is softening, and this is just my opinion and my guess, but I do think that it's gonna go down more. Who knows? I don't know, but I think it will. However, I already have purchased land and am doing a new construction build, and here's just a little more info of why I wanted to do this. So I've already talked about this a little bit on my channel, the Joshua Tree project that I'm building with Rob Built, but I wanna to speak to the reasoning why a little bit more that I think it is still a good idea in this market. In general, I think that buying a house to make into a short-term rental right now is maybe not the best idea going into a recession because it could be that the housing market dips significantly. And also if we're going into a recession, of course the first thing people cut out is travel. So people will be spending probably a lot less money on Airbnb. And I am not planning on buying any houses to make into Airbnbs in the next year. That's just not my plan. However, with buying land and building a new construction, things are a little bit different. For one thing, the project probably won't even be done for two full years. So by then we might not even be in a recession anymore. You can get a lot more for your money if you're going through the hassle. The cost to build our four bedroom, three bathroom house, we expect to be somewhere in the 750 dollars to $850,000 range. So when you go in and look at what's for sale in Joshua Tree in that price range that we're building for, they are houses that are just a little outdated and you could put them on Airbnb, but you can build a way better house that ends up being worth way more. So for example, here's a house that is really comparable to the one that we are building. I don't wanna spoil it yet, so I won't show you our exact plans yet, but this house is even a little bit smaller. And as we can see, it sold for 1.4 million. So even if our building costs were higher than expected and there was a market correction, we would still have plenty of wiggle room. I've seen people build new construction houses and then it appraises for more because they were able to build it cheaper and the market value people would be willing to buy it for, you know, over a million dollars. In short, I just think what is available on the real estate market right now is overpriced for what you're getting. And you can get something a lot better if you build it yourself. Obviously the struggle is knowing how to do that. And luckily Rob is teaching me. So I'll share with you guys what I learned in the process, but that is why I'm doing the new build rather than buying a house and renovating it. Little side note on that, we actually have our architectural plans now and are ready to submit it to get permits. So things are happening with the Joshua Tree house. It's a slow process, but look out for a video soon to see what the house is gonna look like because it's gonna look really cool. In general, with real estate, I just feel like a lot of houses have dramatically gone up in price. And I just wouldn't be shocked if there was a correction because even my Palm Springs house that I bought for 750,000 in 2020 is now getting a Zestimate saying it's worth 1.3 million. Like it's just not normal for homes to appreciate this much. It's not sustainable. I just, I wouldn't be shocked if there was a correction. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know for sure. And also I'm just personally interested in learning the new construction process. So it's kind of a passion project as well. And the last one is really the most boring, but still very important, and that is stocks. But I am investing in stocks in a different way than my last video where I talked about investing. In that one, I was dabbling more into in individual stocks. So instead, I am investing in index funds, ETFs. If you're not familiar with these, it's one kind of stock ticker that you can buy that is a piece of hundreds of different stocks. So there is one that you can buy that has the top 500 stocks on the stock market, and that is the one that I personally like to buy. If you look at the last five years, the top 500 stocks, even today as things have dipped down a bit, we're still up 69%. That's about 13% per year. And that is why I personally like to do a set amount each month. It's called dollar cost averaging if you're not familiar with the term, but it also reduces your risk a little bit so that you're not trying to time the market. With this investment, it is really more of a long-term strategy for me. So you can invest in index funds on SoFi. They sponsored this video and like they didn't, tell me to add this in or anything like that, but that is personally where I'm doing it these days. 
So this is what I'm doing. I just put it in the app. I can select what specific day. So like after I pay myself, right? And then you can select the amount that you wanna do per month and it will just automatically do it. You don't have to think about it. Just very easy. There's a couple of reasons I like doing it this way. One, I feel like it honestly makes you a better investor because you forget about it. You're not freaking out if things drop. You may not even know. So you're never going to like sell and panic about it when you probably shouldn't have. And two, it's just the easiest. It makes sure that you actually do invest every month because there are just way too many things to keep track of. Too many like random bills and whatever, this and that. Like if it is up to me to actually go in and do it every month, I'm sure that I will forget at some point, at least one of the months. So this makes, makes it very simple, makes it very easy. And if you wanna know the actual like stock ticker that I like to invest in. I technically can't say it in this video because I have a sponsor. There are several different index funds. I just look for one that tracks the overall stock market and has pretty much the top 500 companies in it. That's what I like to do. So the studies show it beats out financial advisors 95% of the time. So I feel like you can't beat it. This is not financial advice. This is just what I'm doing. I'm glad we got that sorted. So that is everything that I already kind of have invested in in 2022 and my plans moving forward. I would love to read your comments down below on what you guys are thinking of doing or what you think of what I'm doing. I watch a lot of videos on this kind of thing and I research a lot, I think about it a lot. So this is just kind of what I've been thinking about. I hope that you enjoyed and learned something. That is it for today. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.